What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the first episode in our coverage of the Solus Project. It released in early access this morning, so I figured we'd stop on by and check it out to see what it has on offer. Now the Solus Project is a survival game set on a foreign hostile planet where you have been marooned Robinson Crusoe style. And the point of the game is actually to uncover the narrative that's working behind the scenes. And so whereas a lot of survival games focus on sandbox elements, this game is sandboxy, but at the same time, it's got lots of storyline. And so while the game is not completed, the developers have said that most of the content is done. They're just bug fixing it, and then they're going to step ladder increment it. And so like every couple weeks or every month, or I don't really know what the time frame is going to be, they're going to release another chunk of the storyline so that you can enjoy and play along. I have no idea how long this part of the game is going to be. Like I said, this is early access, so we could technically do like two episodes and then just be done when we hit the end of the content. Or it could be like seven or eight hours worth. I really have no idea. I've played the game for about an hour now just to get a feel for all the controls. I wanted to keep everything else blind, so without further ado, let's play ourselves some Solus Project. I have a tendency to like drone on at the beginning of a series, and I don't want to be that guy. Our slot is going to be save slot. Duh. So let's do it. Way to start off an adventure by busting my skull open, falling out of the drop pod. We survived all that to fall on our head and just damage our brain irrefutably. 
Now we're all right. We should probably... God. Look, it's raining space parts. I'll probably play on normal difficulty, seeing as we haven't seen anything in the game so far. Meh. I don't know if I want to double everything, because that's roughly what you're doing. Although, notice that easy mode is like five times easier than normal mode, so... There's, there's a bit of a step up in between these two. Let's go ahead and we'll start off on normal. And I am going to use the Imperial system. Sorry, everybody. It is what it is. I can use both, but eh, Imperial's a little more comfortable, so welcome to my life. We've got a PDA land on the ground. It appears to be raining stars right now. We've got a helmet on, although just a minute ago we busted it. I think we have a helmet on anyways. When you look up at the sky right there, you can see we've got some kind of face mask or something on. I wonder if this place has an atmosphere that's, like, breathable. Huh. Let's see, what is this? World independent local survival overseer node active. Wilson interfacing with operator. Operator vital signs detected. Okay. This appears to be some kind of like futuristic Fitbit. 98.5 degrees. 532 health, about 3,000 calories. Got about 90 ounces of water in us right now. The temperature is 54 Fahrenheit, 55-ish Fahrenheit. We've got 15 hours till we need to sleep again. It looks like humidity is on the drop, so it's a very, very dry place. I don't know if we just got out of the pod or whatever, but humidity is dropping really, really quickly, and the wind velocity looks like it's at 1.5 miles per hour. Well, let's go forward. Looks like there's a... Well, where do we get out of here? It's not on that side. See, we've got some rocks right here. We're questioning rocks. That's how this entire adventure is going to go. Greetings to you, Diatomite. Can you assist me in my survival? Items have two states. Pick up an item. Craft with other item. Okay. And so what is this right here? This is just a rock. Okay. I guess I needed a... What is this one? Is this just a rock too? We just have two of them. Okay. This right here... Is a cable. It can be cut and requires a tool. Well, if we duck... Looks like I can right-click things to get information. Or maybe that just dropped my rock. I can't really tell. I think it dropped my rock. Never mind. Let's pick it back up. And to my mind, this requires a tool... So we've got the rock. This one's heavy, though. We need something sharp, don't we? Can't really go through right there, either. Oh. Did I just break a rock with a rock? I think I did. So we've got a sharp rock now, and we've got a normal rock. I don't think we're going to need the normal rock anymore now that we got the sharp one, so I'm just going to leave that over there. I, I don't want to be that guy carrying around a giant boulder with me, and it looks like... So there's two different states on items. Essentially what will happen is if you mouse over any other area, it's just like the pickup. But if you can use something on the said item, it'll turn red when you mouse over like the central area or over like a focal point somewhere. Just be aware... That you can interact with a lot of stuff in this game. So we've got rope for climbing. We've got B to sleep, P for stats, O for objectives. Okay. I'll try to keep that in mind as we go along. That didn't really tell us anything we didn't already know. So let's continue forward. It looks like there's some kind of... What is that? A futuristic water bottle laying on the ground. Okay. I'll take a futuristic water bottle. Obviously, if it's from the future, it probably works better than our modern receptacles. Right? We've got what looks like a food can laying right here, so we'll pick that up. We've got a pipe, just in case we got to fight anybody. Or maybe finish off that Ikea furniture that I never quite finished for the den. Another water bottle right there. And then we got a piece of paper. Lotta's Diary, 11 out of 26. I wonder what the public think of us, that we're a bunch of slacker scientists playing with fluids and zero-G for years? Maybe they think it's all a hoax. We watched the Q&A episode, and everything felt so scripted and artificial. Doesn't look like I can loot that, so... Oh, it's got a little thing that flicks out when I 
Huh. If I take that and I point it at the ground, it's got like a little thing that flicks out. We've got resistance buffs, like RPG style. Hypothermia, heat stroke, starvation, dehydration. Okay. Lots of things we got to keep an eye on. I think that we only have 12 inventory spaces, so we'll probably want to be a little bit conservative with our usage of items here. Or at least we'll probably want to grab everything and corral it all into one area and leave it there. There's another piece of paper right here. Let's see, if you find yourself in a precarious situation, explore your surroundings and scavenge whatever useful items you can find before conditions worsen. Okay. As soon as you can, secure a source of heat, fresh water, and food. Find a place to take shelter. How you deal with the first few hours is crucial for your survival. That is indeed true, although all time is valuable during survival time. You just kind of always want to be working on something. Making sure that you're working towards some kind of goal. Like a big chunk of our ship left over there. Those look like magma flows right there. Or lava flows anyways. This is called columnar jointing. This up here essentially happens when you've got non-viscous lava. It flows out of a central point like a volcano or whatever. It solidifies in sheets and then it just kind of all goes over. And that's been eroding for a little while. Although it must have been deposited. I don't know where it came from. It looks like... Probably off that direction somewhere, who knows. Stay dry, sleep well, and protect yourself during storms. Keeping well rested is vital to increasing your chances of survival. Rain or water can quickly lead to hypothermia during nights. Please follow survival training. Be careful not to get lost. Mark locations you've been to. Avoid getting trapped due to nightfall. Rising all up in flames. I need to last long enough to report something back to Prolus Command. Better have a look around and see if anything, or anyone, survived. Be careful not to get lost, mark locations, avoid getting trapped by nightfall, rising tides, storms, losing your light source, and so on. Oh really, they got a full on title system. That's kinda cool. I've got a titling system, but it's just for my videos on YouTube, and so... It's, it's a lot less explosive and awesome than their titling system. Once you are in control of your environment, Find a way to communicate with the outside world. Gather parts and build an impromptu transmitter. Never give up hope that you will be rescued no matter how dire your situation. Yeah, I'm boned. If you need me to build anything mechanical, I think that I'm hosed. That is not my area of expertise. I'd be like, look, this square scrap can be rubbed against this circular scrap, and then it makes noises. Science. Another water bottle. We're a little bit low on water right now, actually. It might be a wise idea to rehydrate a little bit. Oh, really? That actually refills me entirely. Crafting a torch. Creating a makeshift cutting tool using rocks. Cut off dry organic material. Wrap the material around some kind of handle. Apply oil to it if available and light it on fire. So I'm assuming the pipe is the handle. Got a VHS tape right there. Did anybody bring the VHS player? We, we need the VHS player for our survival trip in space. I've got a VHS tape. That's actually, it's just... My old VeggieTales videos to make me happy. I watch it for entertainment value. Then again, we've been on this trip for 15 years, so you can bet that I've seen it a lot of times at this point. Forward Vector. Find a place to take shelter. Okay, so I'm guessing the cave is going to be our huckleberry for that. We've got another rock right there. Drink from a fresh water source. Can I just, like, straight up drink out of this, or... It looks like it just fills up our water bottle. Luckily, we kept the cap. That's a really, really fancy water bottle. It's like a Nalgene bottle, but it's also got, like, viewports on it. And a super fancy top that goes on, even though it does the same thing as every other lid in humanity. I don't know what I would... So it looks like there's roots on the wall or something. What is this for over here? Scavenge some food. Oh, there's like a little lettuce plant on the ground. It looks like a cross between some kind of conifer and a lettuce. Probably tastes awful. Probably tastes like potpourri smells or something. Like, oh, doesn't taste so good unless it's cinnamon potpourri and then it's delicious. Locate a pipe to use as a torch. Bam, got the pipe. Is there another one? Oh, there's a bunch of them. Okay. How many pipes do we need? Probably several. I don't know. The pipe doesn't seem like it's going to get worn out that quickly. It wants me to go over here, though. I may deposit some stuff in our cave. Just to make sure. So why is this crystal over here glowing? 
We're in a cave with a magic crystal and some very, very large cobwebs. Don't invoke the name of Shelob too loudly. Something bad might happen. Shelob, Helob, Weelob. I'll probably just leave some of these pipes and stuff on the ground. If you press backspace, it'll let you drop stuff. And until I know it's like immediately useful, I don't think there's a reason for us to clog up our inventory carrying around a bunch of random stuff that we don't know what it does. I'll probably keep the food cans back here too, and I'll more than likely try to make use of fresh food sources before I fall on my canned resources just because you don't know what the seasons, you don't know what the temperature, you don't know what the conditions are going to be like out here. And if we can scavenge something edible, I find that highly unlikely, by the way. I, I do like survivalism, and I am sort of into it. I find it highly unlikely that you land on a new foreign planet, and you just start, like, tasting things and just hoping you don't die horribly. There's roots over here. So we cut that off the wall, and it looks like it gives us a little root wad. Alright. What I want to do is I want to mix this. So we take the root wad, and then we wrap it around the pipe. And so now we've got a janky looking torch. Okay. <laughs> Alright. I mean, it's improvised. It's definitely as primitive as can be. As primitive as can be. I'll probably cut down a few more just so I have extras. I don't think there's any issue with having... With having excess supplies. You might as well stockpile, I suppose. Got a bunch of food right there. I'm gonna come over to this side of the cave. And let's drop off some of these little fuzzy wumpuses. That's what I'm going to call them from now on because I feel like it's more fun to call them fuzzy wumpus. It's a unit of measurement. We have two fuzzy wump eye of dried roots. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. I'm trying to be a little bit jovial here because all things likely we're going to die on this planet. Speaking of which, the moon is in the ocean. I don't know if somebody wants to inform the science team, but I don't know if it's supposed to be there right now. Normally, that one seems to be doing a pretty good job. This moon, on the other hand... Seems to be doing some very remedial mooning. What is this? Locate oil and apply it to the torch. So I've got a torch right there. So now it's an oil torch. Ew, it's dribbling! Now it wants me to light the torch. Okay. Some objects emit warm or cold. New forward vector, explore. So I guess we just gotta look around. Act 1. The Away Kenning. The Awa Kenning. You ever think about like how arbitrary it is that we decided to pronounce things certain ways when we like designed our language? Apparently we got a Wi-Fi connection out here. It's already doing better than my cell phone. So there's a relay satellite found with a weak can This is Provost Command. Calling from the of Capital Ship Oaks near Playhouse. Check it in for a status update. I can't tell what she just said at all. It sounded like the other colony ships are having trouble. Or something, I don't know. I just checked for subtitles, but due to the early access nature of the game, it looks like there aren't any subs yet. So unfortunately, we kind of just have to... It sounded like she said the other ships are crashing, she was trying to get a hold of us, or the other ships are having trouble. She was from Prolis Command, and that's about all that I could pick up in between the static. Got another pipe over here. We got a little bit of food. I'm not going to break these cans open. Always save preserved food in a situation like this, although I think water is probably the number one thing you want to track down. Fresh water. Oh my god, the plants move here. Got some kind of enormous Venus flytrap. My granddad, back before he died in the olden days, he had a bunch of pet Venus flytraps. He loved those things. He had like five or six of them in his kitchen. And every day he would feed them. Kind of cool. What is this? Some kind of onion or deku plant? Okay, that one's worth a ton of calories, so I figure we'll hold on to that one. All the other ones we found so far are worth like 150. It looks like the torch does increase the temperature of the air around us. So we got 78 degrees Fahrenheit right now. 
I am hoping we won't freeze to death. That seems like one of the major things you would want to avoid doing in a survival game. But I wanted to deposit more things inside the cave because we don't have a lot of inventory space right now. There's driplets on my face. That's not good. Alright. So it does look like the temperature is dropping off pretty quickly, but that's more likely due to the fact that we're inside a cave system than anything else. Caves maintain a natural temperature, which is much lower than that of anything outside, although this doesn't feel like it's deep enough in the earth. It's actually past a certain depth that that starts to happen. Got another pipe right here. Don't think we'll need that right now. We've got the lit torch. We've got a plant. Nights are very cold. It's good to know. Can I eat this thing? Ugh. This tasted like tree. We've got another plant right here. I'm going to eat that too. There we go. So our calories are looking pretty solid. Our water supply is a little bit iffy. But I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be alright. Oh, nightfall is here. Nightfall quietly came and tried to freeze my balls. That shooting star was going kind of low. I don't see shooting stars very often where I live. Simply due to the fact that the light pollution where I live is just way too high. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. I live in the city, and the Bay Area has a lot of light pollution. Or pollution. It looks like there's some things back here. Latest diary. Does these Do these go in order? Right. I decided to start a journal since I was assigned to the Solus Project. It's an honor to be one of the few selected to save humanity, and I want to record that. It's probably a suicide mission, but staying on Prolis is suicide anyways. Met my new colleagues again today. I'll be working closely with Sophia. Said she's worried about leaving her family behind, too, and will lend an ear if I want to talk. She seems nice. Has kids, though. That's a far more bitter pill to swallow. Survival is of paramount importance to the continued existence of mankind. My giant 1980s iPhone is talking to me again. I'm going to call it Wilson from now on. Surprisingly numb after saying goodbye to all my friends and loved ones. Perhaps it'll hit me later. I don't even feel that excited. I just feel nothing. This is one of the greatest moments in human history, and I guess the change is an anesthetic. Did you see that light flash right there on the island? I don't even know how you would begin to deal with a situation like this mentally. Seems like the sort of thing that would crush a lot of people. We got a five. Where's number four then? Because over here it looked like we had one, two, and three. I don't see any more pieces of paper over here. There's a couple right here. There's five and six. Maybe this one's four. Launch day. I guess this is it. I still haven't processed it. We all sat at the crow's nest and watched as our big shining home grew smaller and smaller. Glee 6143C is 15 years away, and this is the only first or this is the first step. It's only the first step. 15 years Earth time, but only 8 years for us. Time flows slower when you travel a substantial fraction of the speed of light. When I told my friends, they said it was trippy. They wanted more of an explanation, but we don't get much time per week, so I cut it short. Sophia sounds like a one-track record. Always going on about her family and her driving passion. Having all that doesn't guarantee happiness or meaning in your life. I get the impression she's trying to make me reevaluate my priorities. Yeah, I noticed that a lot, too, about my friends with kids. It's like they want to join me in the shared misery of their experience. And they do that by guilt-tripping you and trying to make you feel like you're missing something if you don't have kids. They all do it, too. I don't get it. It's like the second somebody has kids, they're like, See, if you, if you don't have kids, you wouldn't understand. I'd be like, alright, that's mildly patronizing. That's only mildly patronizing. But, you know, I'm not going to get mad about it because we go back like throwback. And you know that. And this flow fat. I don't see anything down by the water. The game has a tidal system. I wonder if we'll be able to get to the islands at any point. Will the tides go down low enough, or do we have to risk swimming over there? Wow, that moon is really, really close. You'd think with a moon that... I mean, I guess we don't know the actual size of the orbiting body, but you'd think that would have some kind of disrupting effect on the tide systems. Like a huge gravitational force that close to the planet. I don't know. That one looks like it rotates a little bit faster than that one. Orbits. Whatever you want to call it. Is there anything over here? I'm a little bit terrified there's going to be some nasty, like, wildebeest-type creature out here that wants to gore me with its tusks. You hear that? I hear a crackle. Wow, 
Wow, that temperature's dropping off with a quickness. Holy shit. It's definitely coming from that direction. Yeah, it's coming from over here somewhere. I don't see anything though, so maybe there's a way to get to the opposite side of that wall. But I definitely hear something broadcasting or transmitting or trying to pick up a signal. Did I bring water with me? Okay, good. Always bring water with you when you go out on excursion. Ooh, land lettuce. That's what I'm calling that from now on. It's called land lettuce. I mean, technically, I guess all lettuce is terrestrial, but that's the new name. I was the first one here, so I get to name it. I suppose if I really wanted to be a dick, I could name it something like Nutritional Ball Sack, but eh. Let's keep it real for right now. Crunchiest Maximus. Stuck in my toothimus. Jeez, I don't even know everybody. It's kind of a weird... Ooh, do those hurt me? I don't think that they do. I think we're okay. There's another bit of lettuce right there. Oh, there's another one on this side. Hooray! Anything else? I suppose I should just eat these now. I don't know if they regrow or what happens with them. It looks like we've got some kind of halo that go... Oh my god, it's minus 12? Okay. That's funsies. Whip that thing out real fast. And it looks like we've got... I don't know. It looks like it might be getting too cold for us too quickly. We've got a broadcast point over there. I'm going to try and pick up the food first. But this seems like a pretty good spot to break off the episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Solus Project. I will see you in future episodes. Oh, what is that? An eyeball plant? I'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody.